10 o'clock. I suggest we give it a start. I hope you can hear me back there. I guess so. And otherwise you <laughs> correct the sound. Welcome. Welcome in Rotterdam. For some of you, welcome in the Netherlands. This is the first general introduction round about the English taught Bachelor in International Business Administration offered by Rotterdam School of Management, Erasmus University. Welcome to all of you here present at this rather early hour in the weekend on a Saturday. Welcome also to our viewers. We are live streaming this presentation, so we have viewers all over the world. Welcome. Good to, ha good to have you in the house as well, in brackets. Um, still early. But let's bring some speed, let's bring some pepper. We're talking about a highly international program, so although I guess most of you will come from the Netherlands, do we also have visitors from abroad today? Can I see some hands? That's always nice, thank you. We're honored that you made the effort to come over. So what are we going to do today? Let's talk about business, because we are a business school, that's our field that we teach. Um, then probably uh, elaborate a little bit on why you would choose IBA at RSM. I mean, there's thousands of business schools all over the world, thousands of business programs. Why us? Then let's take a look at the program. What exactly do we teach you? Then a very important chapter, how to apply, how to be admitted to the program, and some practical things. I'd say there's announced questions, but actually, mostly there's not much time left for questions, but we do have a student panel in the next round, and that is specially meant for answering all your questions. So, what are we talking? When we're talking business? Well, actually, um, for some of you, the future in, let's say, 10 years might be that you find yourself somewhere in the United Arab Emirates on a local project, together with the local people, probably the Chinese, some other nationalities as well, in a strange country, a different climate, different food. The project needs to be successful, needs to be completed on time. And that's a challenge. So what you need, you need to be prepared for a career like that. So what we do as a business school, our first aim is to prepare you for such a career. And although you're welcome to stay in the Netherlands, you may have an international outreach because you're working in a company with a lot of international contacts or, clusters or uh, customers. Of course, we're a business school, so we teach you the latest in business. That's the second thing we do. Third, although we are a research university and theory is very important, there's definitely also a practical component. We bring you to the companies with a business plan, with internships, etc. So it's a combination of theory and practice. And last but not least, as this is very likely that you will end up in an international career, uh, we've made sure that we've kind of created, let's say, a human laboratory in which you find people from many different nationalities. Actually, over the past years, every first year that IBA started, we started with more than 50 different nationalities in class. So we are a highly international classroom. Let's take a look at business. You see this, this picture. Um, what they say, uh, they're talking about the so-called functional areas in business. And regardless what kind of company you would take a look at, you will quickly find out that they roughly do the same. They need to sell a good, uh, they need to promote it with marketing, they need to produce it, so supply chain, uh, they have people working on it, human resources, there's IT, data support. These areas are commonly referred to as the functional areas in business. And regardless what kind of company you're watching, you will find, you'll always find them. And the same holds true for business schools. If you would compare programs from different business schools, you will find out that they will all teach you these functional areas. So they're important. Also, for another reason, most bachelor programs are rather broad and teach you a little bit of everything, but the master programs in most cases are very specialized. And it's very, speciali and it's very likely that you may specialize in one of these functional areas, so you go for finance or for marketing. And as a next step, it's also pretty likely that your first job will be in one of these functional areas in business. So you start in the marketing department or in the finance department. So let's take a closer look. Strategy and management, that's where it all comes together. In the end, it's impossible to properly run a company if you only do one functional area as good as you can. And there's always a conflict of interest, because if you will be talking to the marketing guys, they will tell you, ah, we need another million to do a top job. Okay, but it comes at a price and your uh, resources are not infinite. And of course you want to work with top people, pay them top salaries, but it comes at a price. You want to work with top products, it comes at a price. Uh, you need money, you need investment in money. So you see a couple of examples. In the end it's very important that you're able to kind of weigh all these interests. Uh, and if you're a good uh, entrepreneur, if you're properly running a company, probably as a CEO, and some of you will be a CEO within 20 years, uh, you should be able to balance all these different interests and make wise decisions. 
You keep an eye on what is happening in the world, on your competitors, uh, but also inflation, uh, and the labor market, what is happening all over the world, what kind of uh, agreements do we have with regard to trade. That's all important, so strategy is in the middle. Well, a few examples on the other areas. Finance, how to invest, where to invest. Uh, you also need to do proper bookkeeping. Supply chain operations, you need to produce a good a product, uh, you want to have a good products, and nowadays it's also very important to produce it in a sustainable way, because the environment counts. Um, you work with people, your organizational behavior, you want to pay uh, your people a decent salary, human resources. That's the functional areas in business, that's core business for us. Then, as said to the second question, you could choose from so many programs, so many schools, why would you choose us? Um, one reason could be is that you know about our reputation, and actually, RSM, they know us out there. There's a short list with recruiters, there's a short list of business schools, and we're on that list for various reasons. You can find us in the rankings, these lists that are produced by magazines, journals, newspapers, <laughs> Financial Times, Neue Carriere, Business Week, uh, Wall Street Journal, lots of these rankings. The funny thing is, regardless how they measure on labor market success, on teaching quality, on research output, etc., we're always in. And Financial Times, that's a very important one. It's a bit of an elite ranking, because you can only be included if you're also internationally accredited. Come back to that. Normally, they put us some, uh, around within the top ten. I already mentioned being accredited, uh, that's uh, being approved on, approved on quality by external organization for business schools that really want to be taken seriously, only three matter. AEC is B, which is American, Equus, which is European, and AMBA is British. Every business school having at least one of these accreditations is a good school, and we have all three of them. There's also another indicator. Well, as business schools, we sometimes say, well, tell me who your partners are. I'll tell you who you are. I'll show you the partner list later on. That's also an indicator. As said, we are international. We teach in English, we have a highly diverse student group in the house, we work with a mixed team of teaching staff, content of the program is partly international, we have plenty of options to gain international experience, that's typically us. IB8 RSM is very international, also from the supporting staff. Then, in these days, it's not enough to run a company and to survive in the market, uh, because producing goods also pollutes the environment, uh, can also violate uh, human rules, etc. Uh, you've seen uh, the Volkswagen scandal a couple of years uh, ago. Uh, actually, business, society, environment is ready for level 2.0, for the next step. We care about the environment, we want to be responsible in business, uh, and that's why we have named our mission of RSM, of our school. We want to be a force for positive change in the world. So we do two things. We teach you the latest in business, and prepare you for a career. At the same time, we also send you with a mission. We tell, well, this is us. Uh, we want to have an impact in the world for the good, and probably not when you start your career, but when you climb the ladder, so to say, the stairs, uh, you, have more, you are more in a position that you can exert influence, and that's the other thing that we want to, uh, to provide you with. Um, as said, we prepare you for the labor market. Uh, we have a dedicated career service in the house, so we will help you to enter the labor market. Let's take a look at the program, and you immediately recognize some of these functional areas. There's course in finance, there's course in accounting, uh, there's also some supporting courses, some mathematics, a mix, a little bit of everything. Um, there's one ongoing trajectory, the introduction to business, that takes a broad approach, uh, also takes a look at the various functional areas, uh, and the nice one, of course, is also the, the one in the second part. Well, Leave that to the students. The one other one I want to mention is that we offer an ongoing trajectory that starts as a mentor program, which actually means that you're taken by the hand as a first year student by a second year student who just went through the experience. Uh, and in the second half, we train you a couple of skills. I could tell a lot, but I didn't study the program, but my students do. And I'm looking to the left and ask one of my students to elaborate a little bit on the course. Can you please introduce yes. yourself? Yes. Hi, guys. My name is Eva Hatzelau, and I'm currently a second year student, and today we'll tell you something more about the strategic business plan. Before we dive into that, let me tell you something more about myself first. My name is Eva, as I already said, and welcome again to Rotterdam. Since two years, I can proudly call this my new home. I'm Dutch and I come from a very small town inside the middle of the Netherlands, so when I decided that I wanted to study IBA, I actually needed to move. And those two years has been amazing so far. I've met many new friends from all across the world. I've done many new things. And to elaborate a little bit more on the learning part, one of the courses you has as, as a first year student is a strategic business plan. This course is quite intense. It lasts for half a year. 
During the course, you will, as the name already indicates, you will write a strategic business plan for a real-life company. In a group of four students, you will go out there and you will try to look for a company that wants to work with you. If you have found a company, then you will conduct an internal, external analysis, you will interview the employees, and so on. You will analyze their data, and based on that, you will make a solid report, which you will give back to the company, and that hopefully adds some value for them. But for you as a student, it's a really good way to already see pretty early on in the program how the theoretical concepts you have learned, how they are applied into real life. Because I remember when I was sitting here, I thought, okay, we're studying a business after all, so I need to know more than just the book. I need to know how to apply it, how you could do that. And this is one of the courses that really helps you with that. In my case, I did it for Mass Internal Logistics, which is a logistics provider, and they really helped me. They were fun companies to work with, and in the end, it was a very good experience to already see how all the theoretical knowledge you have, have learned, how that is applied into practice. Besides that, you also have other courses that do this, and as a good, it's also a good networking opportunity as a student. Actually, one of the courses this year we had, I actually got a job offer, and I'm currently working at that company, so it's also a really good way to just network yourself, put yourself out there, and in the end, all your theory really apply that into practice. And that's it for the strategic business plan. I'm also at the panel. You can ask more questions about this or student life to me over there or at our stand downstairs. There are my friends, and they will be more than happy to answer all your questions as well. And May that's I it. already ask you one thing? Yes. Um, because you're kind of diving into this company, and uh, some information might be sensitive, their financial situation, for instance, or their competitors, etc. Did they give you access to all this kind of sensitive information? Or did you si need to sign an agreement, or how did it go? Yes, as a student, you're actually signing a contract, a confidentially, to make sure that all the information you get is confidential, especially because with competitors, they don't want to put that out there. So you sign a contract, the whole group does that in the beginning, to make sure that everything that happens stays within the group and the university and doesn't go anywhere else without the permission of the company. And, and the other thing I was curious about, in the end, you're just, with all respect, a first-year student. Did yeah. they take you seriously? Uh, they Actually, they do. They're quite interested. You also, you're coming there to the company and you offer a new, fresh perspective to all the problems and issues they have. So they do take you quite seriously and it's also, it's a good way to like see how a company works. But they, at least in my experience, my company really took me serious and all the other students they s said the same thing because they know you're from a university that is well, well known, so they know they should take you serious. Sounds interesting. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>
research project, because after all, we are a research university, so we train you in advanced statistics and how to apply proper research methods. The other one I would like to mention is uh, technology management. That's a bit of a specialty. Uh, that's a course we jointly offer with the Technical University in Delft. And you're working on a project together with students from Delft. Uh, I can tell you they're different, these uh, science guys. It's mainly guys. Um, so you work on a patent and you need to come up with a proposal and you see there's much different characteristics between a business student and a science student. But still, you'll meet later on. So this is good for early practice, so to say. The nice thing about having successfully passed your first year and when you're active in the second year is that you have so many choices to fill your time. And of course, with studies itself, but actually when you are a second year student, you can also be in the honors program. So a selective program uh, that brings you places in entrepreneurship, innovation. It even includes a study trip to Silicon Valley. Uh, but you can also apply to be a teaching assistant or a mentor or an ambassador, people helping here. Lots of opportunities. And actually, you also need to prepare for important choices that are waiting for you for the third year. Because then you need to choose. Will I go on an exchange to one of our many partner schools, or will I go to the company for an internship, or will I broaden my mind, uh, broaden my horizon, taking electives, minors, do something different than business? This choice is yours. Might be a challenging choice. This is the third year. The first half of the third year is entirely flexible, so the choice is yours. You do either an internship or an exchange or a minor. Depending on how many credits you earn, you need to fill the rest of the space until the end of January with electives. So when you did a short internship of 15, you do 15, elect uh, 15 credits in electives. When you take a bigger one, uh, you can compensate a little bit. So it's a very flexible part of the program. And the second part is already preparing you for choices you may need to make later on. Uh, we have defined five so-called tracks, you could also call them profiles, and they relate to characteristics that you may have, because some of you might be more into the numbers, number cracking, the maths, uh, the stats, etc. Uh, most likely you will find these kinds of students in tracks one and two, because the first one is typically on operations, logistics, supply, uh, business information, data uh, management, uh, business analytics, so it's pretty quantitative in approach. It's also true for the second one, because this is where finance and accounting are hiding, which is also a lot of numbering. But we also may have students who are more into the qualitative courses, the human factor, society, uh, responsibility. Then you might probably better fit in one of the tracks three, four, and five. So track three is mainly on marketing, human resources management, the human factor, so to say. Track four uh, relates, for instance, to global problems, to macroeconomics, international business, but also business society management, sustainability. And the fourth one is focused on people with an entrepreneurial spirit who would like to go for innovation, set up a company, in, in, uh, introduce changes in company. So these are the five tracks, the five profiles that we offer. You need to choose one. And you take three courses in this area, and you're also required to write your bachelor thesis in this track. As said, we have a nice list of partner schools. Uh, you will recognize quite some of the big names in the US, uh, a lot of good schools in Europe. Our policy has always uh, been try to get the best partners as you can. So in principle, we're heading for the top all over Europe. So you may know that the best business school in Italy is Bocconi, that's on the list. The best one in Switzerland, St. Gall is on the list, etc. Increasing demand for going east, uh, Asia, probably not now, uh, but later on again, <laughs> until last year also. Uh, mainland China, very popular, so we're expanding all the time, but also Taiwan, and also the neighbor areas, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, etc. Very popular among our students. That's a great list. Then after the bachelor, the choice is yours again. You can, you're welcome to stay with us, uh, continue with a master. What we see is that taking a gap year is getting increasingly popular among the IBA students. It's roughly a quarter, so stepping out for a year, doing other things, for instance, internships, or traveling, languages, etc. Uh, but in the end, most students uh, also continue their studies for the master program. And it's around 8% who goes for a master program somewhere else. As long as you go to a good school, we're fine with that. You can also start your career. Uh, one of the advantages is that you may qualify for an MBA, which is also a master, but for this master you need relevant working experience at a higher level. So that's only for the more experienced ones, so to say. Then, of course, the logical question, you are with us in the English taught bachelor program. We also have one in Dutch, which is called Bedrijfskunde, which is the logical choice, so to say, for everybody coming from the Netherlands. Uh, so what's the difference? Of course, the language. <coughs> but probably even more important, uh, 
IBA has become very popular over the past year, so we need to work with a limit on capacity. So we limit the number of students, I'll come to back later. Spedrijfskunde still has open admission, which explains why they start with around 1,000 students per year, so it's a bit bigger than IBA. Uh, and of course, the difference is also in the students, because in Bedrijfskunde you will mainly find Dutch students, a few internationals, uh, the internationals are clearly in the IBA program. So if you consider both, this is the main differences. Then, that's a movie. Because we're going to the next chapter, very important, application and admissions. So you want to study IBA at Rotterdam School of Management, Erasmus University. Of course you do. It's one of the most prestigious schools in the world of business. You're not the only one who wants to study here, but there are only a fixed number of places. So before you pack your bags and head to Rotterdam, there are a few things you have to check. Do you have the right diploma? Is your maths level sufficient? Is your English good enough? On the RSM website, you can find the requirements for many diplomas from around the world. If you meet our minimum requirements, there's a reasonable chance that you'll be admitted and we encourage you to apply. The first step in the application process is to register in StudyLink between the 1st of October and the 15th of January. Within 24 hours of registration in StudyLink, you will receive a link to our online application form. The second step is to fill in the form and submit your application before the 31st of January. Be sure to apply as early as possible. This will save you from a lot of stress and will ensure that you meet the deadlines. After you've applied, the selection process begins. So, how does the selection work? First of all, the RSM Admissions Office will check your education background to see if you qualify. Selection points are then awarded for your grades from the last completed year of secondary school and your motivation to study IBA. After all applications have been evaluated, applicants are ranked according to the awarded selection points. On the 15th of April, StudyLink will send you your rank number. Applicants with rank numbers 1 to 650 will be offered a place in the program. Applicants with rank numbers 651 and higher will be placed on a waiting list. When an applicant declines their offer of admission, it will be given to the next person on the waiting list. All of this might sound a bit scary, but it really isn't. Everything you need to know is on the RSM website. See if you meet our admission requirements, and if you do, apply. We hope to see you at RSM in September. Well, that should be rocket science, but still, <laughs> I go through the different steps. As said, we are in numerous fixtures programs, so we work with a limited capacity. <coughs> Actually, we would prefer to start with a first year group of around 550 students, but we know because of the system you need to offer a little bit of more places to end up with this number. So formally, we have set our capacity at 650. Um, in the Netherlands, you can only apply to two numerous fixtures programs maximum. So if you consider us, for instance, and Maastricht and Amsterdam, we all work with the numerous fixtures, you can only apply to two. And two other ones have open admission. And you need to go to Link to find out which programs do have the numerous fixtures and which programs are open. And then it's four max. Um, some dates are set in stone. The most important one is the application deadline with Link. You already saw it in the video. 15th of January, everything closes down. That's set in stone. We cannot, con we cannot change that. That's uh, really a fixed date. So as you will understand, for next September, we're already closed. Uh, but we're open for the run for September 2021. That's a very important date. And the other important date is the deadline for uploading your documents to us. That's the 31st of January. Um, then we go to the various steps. We check three things. Do you bring a diploma that gives you access? And roughly speaking, if you have a secondary school diploma, or you're going to obtain that, that gives you access to a university in your own country. In principle, you're on the safe side. We check, we know a lot of these diplomas. As you saw in the video, uh, there's lots of detailed information on the website, because that also gives the information about the other requirements. Your math needs to be, mathematics needs to be at a, at a decent level. Roughly speaking, you need to be fine, you need to be okay with differential calculus. If you have reached this level and you're fine with that, you can easily survive the mathematics in the program. So we check when you apply if you roughly meet this requirement at this level. 
Third, your English needs to be okay. Most applicants, uh, especially if you're non-Dutch, will be required to take an English language test. You can take TOEFL, IEL IELTS. We also accept some other tests. Uh, there's a small group of countries uh, from which you automatically, automatically qualify. So roughly speaking, in North and Western uh, Europe, the German-speaking uh, area, the Netherlands, Germany, uh, then you can be exempt for the English language uh, requirement. But these are the main requirements. Then how does the selection work? <coughs> grades are very important for us, already before you board with us, but also during the program, because we know the higher your grades are, the more chances you have, for instance, to be selected for the honors program, to get a good exchange spot, uh, to be hired as a teaching assistant. So grades matter with us. And this is also what you see uh, for the admission requirements. Uh, the higher your grades, the more points you get. <coughs> if you exactly meet the minimum, so for instance, if you are at the Dutch secondary education, VWO, you need an average grade of seven. If you are exactly at seven, you get zero points from us. The, the, the more above you are, the more points you get. And that's an important criterion because it counts for 75% in the ranking. The other 25% is done by either sending in your CV or answering our motivation question. And the choice is yours. You can earn an equal amount of points for both. So then the big question, of course, if you are free to choose <coughs> either uh, a CV or uh, answering the motivation question, you would need to check for yourself uh, which criterion will most improve my chances. We think if you have a more international background, because you come from abroad, but also when you have extensively traveled, or you come from an international school system like International Baccalaureate, or you've been on language camps in summer, etc., etc., so you bring a pretty high international profile, then it might be advisable to go for the CV. <coughs> However, it can also be the case, sorry, I need a sip of water. <coughs> However, if you are very Dutch, let's say you come from uh, Grimpe aan de IJssel, uh, and you've never really traveled, you do not have a, an impressive international CV, still you have equal chances to be admitted. But then it's wise to think over and think about answering the motivation question. In the end, we only want to know one thing from you. You know we have uh, a best, uh, bedrijfskunde program which is taught in Dutch. We want to know from you why it has to be this English taught international business administration program. Why not the default program? Why not Bedrijfskunde? Tell us. <coughs> and maybe you've thought it over. Maybe you have plans. You know where you want to be in 20 years of time. Maybe you're eager to, uh, to meet international people. We're just curious to hear your story. So you need to decide either the CV or answering the motivation question. As I said, we make a ranking, a big list, uh, from one till how many applicants uh, we have, who have uploaded on time, a long list. Uh, we distinguish a couple of tiers, but actually only tier one really matters, because that's the tier in which all the applicants are who are fully qualified, who bring an eligible diploma, who have the right level of mathematics, the right level of English, and also the required grades. That's tier one. Last year was around 1100, 1150 students uh, who had a place in this tier one. And so far, we've only given admission to students who are put in tier one. So if you're missing requirements with regard to mathematics or English or both, chances are very limited to be admitted to the IBA program. So if possible, meet all the formal requirements, secure a place in tier one. <coughs> Time frame, we open around 1st of October. Uh, so 1st of October this year we opened for the 2021 entry. Um, deadline with StudiLink, 15th of January. The one not to miss, it's not in our own hands. Second deadline, end of January. Upload your information, the answer to your motivation question or your CV, your grades, all the things we ask uh, for you, from you. Uh, then you have to wait because we need to go through all these applications. We'll inform you about the outcome uh, around 15th of April. Then you have two weeks to accept your offer or cancel it, <coughs> and then we, in the end we also need your final uh, secondary school diploma to, uh, to get admission. And we stop giving out offers around 7th of August. Some tips, uh, there's nothing wrong in applying early. Uh, you saw in the video that it can be quite a job to do the application. Uh, I can tell you I've seen in the last years uh, people completing their application five minutes before midnight. Uh, I would not advise to do so. If the system is down for a couple of minutes, yeah, you're out. Don't take the risk. Uh, there's nothing wrong in applying early. And it also makes our life a bit easier. We have to go through a lot of applications, so the earlier you apply, the better it is for all of us. 
Have some patience, which has to do with the fact that uh, in this numerous fixture system, should it need to accept a place, but it can also deny a place, and then we can give it to someone else. As a result, because we are a very international program, uh, because I can tell you around two-thirds of the first-year students in IBA are not Dutch, come from abroad, only one-third is Dutch, uh, especially the international applicants, they apply all over the world. They apply with us, but also at other universities in the Netherlands, but also in the UK, in the United States, some other European countries. And at a certain moment, they need to decide. Which means that quite some students, although they get an offer from us, do not come and cancel their application. And in the past year, we saw that if you have a ranking number of around 700, 800, even 900, you can still very well be in the program. So if you're patient, and if you, you can see it on our website, where we are, you can exactly see how many places we've been giving out so far, uh, it pays off to be patient. The other way around, if you're already decided, IBA, that's not for me, please then cancel your place, because only then we can give it to someone else. Still, if you want to be in the race, uh, don't cancel, because there's no way back. As soon as you cancel with StudyLink, there's no way back um, to re-enroll again. So you need to think it over. So practical matters, our normal tuition fee would be slightly above 9,000 euros a year. Uh, however, uh, we are a public university, which means that uh, tuition fees for Dutch students, but also for people with a nationality of one of the countries of the European Economic <coughs> Association, have a subsidized fee, which is slightly above 2,000 euros. That's quite a difference. <coughs> for those paying the high fee, the non-European fee, we have uh, scholarships available, not an infinite number, but still. Uh, this is merit-based, so the better you have performed, the higher you are on a ranking list, the more chances you have to be uh, awarded a scholarship. Um, and actually, the scholarship covers the full difference between the high tuition fee of 9,300 and the subsidized fee of 2,200. So it's around 6,000 uh, uh, equivalent. Uh, so you can, you can try to qualify for that. Housing. Um, we have some housing on campus, dorms, for the internationals. You can stay there for one year. Uh, briefly speaking, uh, Rotterdam is not as easy as it used to be in the past, but still it's relatively easy compared, for instance, to Amsterdam and Utrecht. If you start looking early, let's say <coughs> you get an offer around April, you start your search around half of April, beginning of May, you're pretty certain to secure a decent place, even on campus. Uh, it's relatively expensive on campus, but it's all included. Uh, everything is there, the internet, the fridge, etc. It's furnished. Um, so it's worth applying, especially if you are an international. If you're non-European, you might need a visa. Don't make any steps. Uh, wait for us. Normally, we start the procedure. It will save you a lot of effort. Then, there's many ways to be in touch with us. Uh, first and most important, the website. RSM, IBA, go to admissions application. If you want to find out, ah, I come from, let's say, Lithuania, I want to see if my diploma gives access, uh, what exactly are the topics for mathematics are, what kind of grades I need, what the level of English, etc. It's all described in detail for at least 60 to 70 different uh, educational systems all over the world. So the website is your rich source of information. It's also your chance to find out about other characteristics on the program. There's many ways to get in touch with us, like this, open days, you can visit it, uh, be a student for a day. Uh, this one, I really like, Unibuddy. Um, you can be in touch directly with one of our current students. And the nice thing is, we have <coughs> quite a big group of these students in this Unibuddy system, uh, probably at this moment around 60, and there's a pretty good chance that you'll be able to connect with someone who is like you because he or she is Dutch, obviously, or French, or Russian, because they're all there. Maybe someone who did the same school system, so someone who did the French baccalaureate, or the uh, German abitur, or uh, the Russian matui. Uh, it's also possible that you find someone who also did the international baccalaureate. This is your chance to find out, okay, people like me, in this case, the girl from Vietnam, uh, how is it when I come from Vietnam to be in this program? Are there more people from my country? Uh, am I sufficiently qualified, etc.? So this is one that is strongly recommended. It's really a unique chance to get direct information from our current students. For the parents, because as usual we see more parents than children here uh, in, in this room, um, there's also information for you, of course. Uh, you might want to find out uh, RSM's reputation. Is it fake or is it true? Well. Take a look on the website, uh, there's a lot of in-depth information about our status and reputation. The same for the fees, you can read it in detail. Uh, also what you can do after studies, after the bachelor, also for a career, and also with regard to, uh, to housing. So you're welcome. Then, having 
told so much about the IBA program itself. The question is, is there life next to IBA? I would not be able to answer, but one of our students could. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chaitanya Mehta. I'm a second year IBA student, and I'm going to talk to you about the extracurricular activities you can do in addition to your studies. Uh, when I joined IBA, I saw there were a lot of, ex, uh, so a lot of associations and club one, clubs one can join in order to pursue new interests or develop existing ones. This ranges from sports to culture to politics to music and dance and any other interests that you may have. So I'm going to take you through a couple of the associations we have at university. To start off with, we have STAR. STAR is the study association for all IBA and BA students. It has over 60 to 70 committees and they're all responsible for organizing events and activities. These range from orientation days to study trips to workshops and seminars that are organized by guest lecturers. They also have events like the Erasmus Recruitment Days and the STAR Management Weeks, where you can speak to company representatives and visit the companies at these in-house company days. It's a good way to develop yourself socially and professionally. Next, is, there is SR. SR is the study student representatives. These student representatives, they act as a link between the professors and the students. So if the students want to communicate something to the professor, it's done via an SR and vice versa. I'd like to emphasize the fact that there is something for everyone out there. Uh, no matter how specific your interest is, there is an association for you. For example, if you want to know more about culture, we have the Chinese Student Association, the Italian Association, the Eastern European Association, and many more of these cultural associations. If one wants to know more about investment and stock markets, there's the BNR, Bose Investment Society. If you want to get into data science and data analytics, there's the Turing Students Association. Next, we have Erasmus Sport. This is the collective for all sporting associations here at Erasmus University. We have sports, we have sports that range from football to basketball to kickboxing to, to sailing and rowing. I'm a part of the badminton association. I've been playing with them for two years and I've recently gone into boxing. I was also in ISEC. ISEC is an association that aims at emphasizing the sustainable development goals. It wants to instill leadership qualities in students by sending them on exchange activities in order to emphasize these SDGs. Now, as a concluding point, I'd like to mention that if you do decide to join IBA, I'd highly recommend being part of an association. It's a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of people outside your program, and you get to learn and grow as an, as an individual, both professionally and socially. And yeah, uh, at the end of the day, university life should not only be about studying, it should be about having a balance between your studies and extracurricular activities. So that's all I have to say about extracurriculars. I hope I've been able to inform you sufficiently. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> Which might bring us to the end of this session. Uh, it's also about time, I said, it's wise to ask you questions at the booth. We're one floor down with a lot of ambassadors, people helping, but, you can. but you're also strongly recommended to join the session with the student panel. Uh, actually, when I see all these activities alongside studies, I'm always curious how many hours per week are left for studying, so maybe you can ask them right away in the student panel. Uh, thank you for being with us. This was the end of the presentation. Meet us at the floor and wish you a great day. Thank you. Thank you.